البدايه بالجلسه الافتتاحيه الحقيقه الجلسه الافتتاحيه لهذا الملتقى ستكون بعنوان التوجه نحو التعاون متعدد الاطراف لتحقيق النمو الاخضر بيدير الجلسه سياده السفيره ندى العجيزي مدير اداره التنميه المستدامه والتعاون الدولي بجامعه الدول العربيه تفضل يا فندم والمتحدثون السيده الينا بانوفا المنسق المقيم للامم المتحده في مصر السيد ابراهيم العافيه رئيس التعاون بوفد الاتحاد الاوروبي في مصر والسيد ايمن سليمان الرئيس التنفيذي لصندوق مصر السيادي And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the third forum uh, for uh, the transition to green economy um, under the title, and this session is under the title uh, Towards the Multilateralism and Green Growth. Uh, as you all know, uh, the transition towards green economy is a major component of the 2030 Agenda uh, of Sustainable Development. Uh, besides its positive impact on the environment, um, it has also very important impacts on uh, social vulnerability and on uh, economic uh, prosperity. Uh, through adopting a sustainable project and investing in renewable energy, waste management, sustainable production, uh, green buildings, etc., Uh, this will all uh, lead to uh, uh, green growth uh, in any country. Uh, in this, at this session, uh, we are going to address the topic of uh, effective uh, multilateral uh, cooperation uh, and how to accelerate the transition to uh, green growth uh, in Egypt uh, while being uh, resilient to hazards and uh, uh, crises like, uh, for example, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and also we're going to address um, Egypt's capabilities and opportunities to achieve uh, green growth. Uh, I'm honored to introduce the first uh, speaker, Ms. Elena Panova, the UN resident coordinator in Egypt. Um, Ms. Panova, uh, as representative uh, and coordinator for uh, the UN uh, family here in Egypt, um, uh, you are, uh, of course, uh, working to um, fulfill the needs of the uh, Egyptian government and uh, aspirations of the Egyptian uh, uh, private sector um, in a number of areas, of course. In your views, Uh, how can multilateral cooperation help Egypt in its transition to a uh, green economy? Please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nada Lagizi. It is indeed a huge honor and privilege to join this panel today and to participate in the third forum of strategies for transition to green economy. Uh, representing the UN system in Egypt, you rightly said that my intervention will be focused on the role of multilateral, multilateral cooperation in boosting green growth. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me first start by saying that we all need to be proud that together we have created globally a very ambitious framework of multilateral cooperation for promoting green growth. What do I mean by this? First, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the associated Sustainable Development Goals. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change, the Convention on Biological Diversity, Also, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification are some of the key pillars of this global framework that we put together. Our collective success in the form also of the Vienna Convention to protect the ozone layer and the Montreal Protocol unambiguously revealed the possibilities of multilateralism. Multilateralism as the most efficient pathway to address the emerging planetary challenges and harness the opportunities offered by the green growth. However, 
we all know that strong efforts by all countries are needed to realize the ambitious environmental goals of the Paris Agreement or any of the multilateral agreements I was just mentioning. So the three planetary crises of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution, and sometimes also the Minister of Environment that just spoke adds also the land degradation. They are reinforcing each other and driving further damage to the environment and also to our health. The UN Secretary General reminded the G7 world leaders earlier this week that we are coming to a point of no return with respect to these three, four global planetary crises. So what do we do as UN and what do we bring to the table to enable multilateral cooperation to address this planetary crisis? While at global level, UN provides a platform to bring its member states, including Egypt, and Egypt is very active on the global arena, coalition of stakeholders together to agree on these critical guiding frameworks. At the country level, we have the UN development system, and we work very closely with the government to offer various solutions, like technical advice as well, expertise, and also capacity building on these relevant areas. In Egypt, we have some remarkable successes in this regard. Many of those were shared by Her Excellency the Minister, but allow me also to mention you know, a few other which we believe are very important. A collaboration between the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy and the Global Environmental Facility and UNDP, United Nations Development Program, paved way for transformation of a market through rapid uptake on LED technology in Egypt. The UN supported the government in adopting very important regulatory and legislative reforms to set lead efficiency standards in line with internationally agreed standards and baselines. An awareness and also social media campaign and also competition helped create ripple effects of rapid adoption among banks, hotels, supermarkets, government offices, and also households. So this one project delivered energy savings equivalent to electricity for 2 million households per year. Really impressive. Another example that is currently also you know, in a motion. This is an example that I bring again from UNDP, one of our agencies that is mostly focused in working on green, green growth, and also UNIDO, another agency. So among those two agencies, we've supported 82 companies in adopting green and circular measures and systems. 100 rooftops photovoltaic systems were installed reducing emissions to 9.47 tons of CO2 emissions. And this year, as a UN system, we plan to work with over 400 companies. We become more ambitious, you know, seeing the successes in adopting green and circular economy measures and systems, while we also plan to work with the government on the regulatory part of this, on 10 policy measures and strategies targeting green and circular economy. 19 low carbon green technologies are expected to be promoted and also implemented across various sectors. Uh, we cannot, you know, uh, get away without mentioning COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 provided the world uh, also a unique opportunity to accelerate the transition to green economy and promote green growth. The world is spending trillions of dollars on COVID-19 recovery efforts, and we have this unique opportunity to ensure that bulk of this spendings goes to greener and also cleaner sectors. I will go back to Egypt. In Egypt, 100 billion 
Egyptian pounds package was announced by the government to boost recovery from COVID-19. And Egypt has shown remarkable commitment that deserves global attention. And has also the capacity to unlock a green transformation in the country. Last year, Egypt managed to issue, and that was mentioned, the first sovereign green bonds in MENA region, uh, uh, raising around $750 million, whereby also ensuring that finances raised are earmarked towards projects that promote green growth, especially in field of green transport and also renewable energy. Also last year, the government announced its commitment to increase green investment projects proportion 30% by 2022 and 100% by 24-25, inshallah. These recent developments building on successful reduction of fossil fuel subsidies in Egypt together show a clear pivot towards green finance and also green investment in Egypt. As United Nations, we stand ready to work with the government to ensure that these successful examples from Egypt on green transitions are also recognized and shared globally so that other countries can emulate the successful initiatives of Egypt. At the same time, more of these initiatives can ensure that Egypt uses COVID-19 as an opportunity to accelerate transition to green economy. And one very obvious example is the recently announced second wave of structural reforms in Egypt, which aim to diversify the productive structure of the Egyptian economy with focus, as you know, on three major sectors, manufacturing, industries, agriculture, and also ICTs. There is a huge scope to ensure that this next wave of structural economic reforms promote green growth strategies in these leading sectors. And we as UN are ready to work with the government uh, to make this happen. The last thing I want to mention uh, is that the UN system conducted a deeper look at what explains the success story of multilateral cooperation in the renewable energy, energy sector, because it is a success story of Egypt. So there are two or three important things that are key in our view for this success. First thing, clear regulatory environment and priority setting by the government. The government is the one that leads the way. These are the building blocks of successful multilateral cooperation and private sector engagement. Participatory, transparent approaches uh, to regulatory formulation instills confidence among the st stakeholders. So if we have this, there is a guarantee that whatever we start with the leadership of the government, it will turn into success. So let me conclude by saying that the UN system stands ready to partner with all relevant stakeholders, with the private sector as well, to scale up the success stories of green transition of Egypt. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Panova, for this uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, now we move to our next speaker, Mr. Ibrahim Al Afia. Mr. Ibrahim is the uh, head of cooperation at the EU delegation in Egypt. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, the, UA, uh, the U EU um, uh, countries uh, play a leading role and, uh, uh, and have very, very uh, important uh, footprints on uh, the uh, green economy. Uh, all over the world, uh, not only here in Egypt. But uh, I wanted to uh, listen uh, to your views on uh, the success stories and the innovations that uh, the EU can bring uh, to uh, Egypt and uh, how the EU is helping Egypt in um, implementing its strategies on uh, green economy. Please, Mr. Brahim, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nadia Nadal Adizi. It's a real pleasure for me to be here today, uh, representing our ambassador uh, that he could not be here with us today. But um, I would like, first of all, to, to thank you for this invitation, but also to express my gratitude uh, to the organizers. I think we have heard a very ins inspiring um, uh, speech by Her Excellency, and I wanted to reflect on how the EU, as you said, are, is uh, currently um, portraying and trying to reflect um, European policies and supporting Egypt in reflecting those European policies. As you know, the European Union um, has engaged into a green economic transition that now has been reinforced by the launch of what we call the European Green Deal in 2019. The European Green Deal aims at actually uh, turns EU climate to a neutral, um, to a, a neutral carbon by, 200, by 2050. This is a very ambitious uh, policy and strategy. Um, it will require a massive amount of uh, resources. Uh, it is estimated that will require one trillion euros in order to achieve this, this target. Of course, uh, this will be done with the participation of many stakeholders, public, of course, uh, states, but also private sector and, uh, and, and civil society and NGOs. Um, the European Green Deal uh, is boosting our effort to reform all sectors of the European economy to be more sustainable, resilient, and fair with the global ambition of reaching climate neutrality, as I said, by 2050. The agenda is driven by scientific evidence and economic logic. The European Green Deal and the digital, digital transformation agenda are a growth model for a more sustainable, inclusive, resilient, and future-proof economy. The coronavirus pandemic has demonstrated how vulnerable and interconnected our economies are now. Now it also offers a great opportunity uh, to reinforce and transition our economies to be more resilient, sustainable, and inclusive. As part of our external dimension of the Green Deal, the EU has adopted also a new financial instrument that should be the instrument that will be used in order to mobilize resources for external action of the European Union. And this new instrument that is called uh, um, um, Global Europe has a power of 80 billion euros that are dedicated for our cooperation. We have set um, a target for a climate change actions that is 30% of this instrument has to be purely dedicated to climate change ad adaptation and mitigation actions. We would like to reflect also and to support Egypt in its green transition and green economy using, of course, this instrument. But if we look back to the past, we see that our investment here in Egypt, where half of the amount has been um, dedicated to support through grants some 700 million euros that goes to climate relevant and environmental projects. So we are investing more than the 30% that now is being the target in the current instrument, we used to do so, and we used to, of course, support the Egyptian economy in its green transition. We are indeed supporting investments in the water sector, in sustainable energy, in environment, and linking it with private sector investment. And I'm glad to see here today representative of two of our programs, I see GEF, which is in, in, uh, in, in partnership with EBRD, EAB, and, uh, and, and, and AFD, that uh, also support financially through uh, commercial banks the investment that are needed in enterprises in order to cope with the green challenges. But also EPAP, 
the, uh, the Egyptian pollution abatement program with EAB and AFD funding and the EU funding that are also helping in, in, in this matter. So private sector for us is very important and going uh, and supporting investments in this area is key in order to achieve success in, our, uh, uh, in supporting green economy. Um, an example that I would like to shed light on it is actually our support to the water sector. Water and sanitation is very important. And let me give you some uh, figures. The EU has been responding to water scarcity challenges since 2007 with more than 500 million euros in grants, leveraging concessional funding of nearly 3 billion euros in the sector with other European member states development agencies and European financial institutions. Our existing co-funded programs extend over 16 Egyptian governorates, providing nearly 25,000 permanent jobs opportunities and nearly 600,000 short-term job opportunities, mainly in the rural areas. This shall help in improving the quality of life for nearly 18.5 million inhabitants in Egypt by year 2025. Today, the EU wants to do more to support Egypt's efforts in transitioning to a more sustainable, inclusive, and competitive economy. We are currently engaged in consultation with all partners and the European and the Egyptian authorities to prepare our future programming for the period 21-27. Investors and partners need stability and predictability. Egypt has engaged into concrete steps towards a more sustainable policy framework with the 2030 sustainable strategy. The preparation of sustainable investment criteria and recently the successful launch of the green bonds are a testimony of these efforts. We are committed to support these efforts. We are keen uh, on not only providing financial support to this aim, but also providing the, the know-how and the technology and the technical assistance to the policy framework and other uh, and offer more predictability to cooperation partners and private investors. There is a lot ahead, but we look forward to continuing our partnership with Egypt for a better environment and a sustainable and inclusive economy. I would like to conclude by emphasizing the importance of such forum and all forms of regular dialogue and consultations between policymakers, the private sector, investors, and civil society organizations to better understand and, um, the needs and opportunities for a truly inclusive and sustainable economic transition. I wish you all a fruitful debate, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Rafia. Uh, our next speaker uh, is Mr. Ayman Suleiman. He's the CEO of uh, Egypt, uh, Egypt's Sovereign Fund. Uh, Mr. Suleiman, uh, being the CEO of the first Egypt Sovereign Fund, um, please uh, tell us about, or give us some examples on, on um, investment areas uh, for, uh, for Egypt, prominent investment areas uh, in the area, ex especially in the sector of uh, green economy. Please. With, with pleasure. Thank you very much. I think it's, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent opportunity to highlight where, uh, where we, are, we draw parallels between every uh, sustainable development goal that, that has been even uh, starting with the speech of Her Excellency uh, um, uh, Dr. Yasmin, uh, with uh, uh, the commitment of the EU and the commitment of the UN supporting those uh, targets. We as a fund, we're looking at uh, translating all of those priorities and signals to, to become 
uh, what we translate into investable, green investable opportunities, and this is at the heart of our uh, strategy build up on uh, uh, transactions. So how do we trans translate those uh, uh, targets? How do we manifest those into uh, investable projects that are qualified as green sustainable uh, investments? And this is, uh, uh, I'll pinpoint a couple of those examples, but I just want to uh, highlight where the role of uh, uh, sovereign uh, investors, where the role of uh, long-term uh, uh, infrastructure funds, uh, uh, multilaterals, uh, development partners, uh, uh, Multi DFIs, all of these partners are seeing the same uh, opportunity to invest in sustainable growth, and it becomes now, um, it's no longer a luxury. It's no longer a box that you take to qualify for green financing. It is becoming the mainstream access to uh, financing, and some industries are now falling from grace from having access to finance or access to capital allocation. Carbon neutrality is becoming a goal that is baked into uh, most of the portfolio and asset managers uh, uh, around the world. We as a fund, we have committed to join a number of those um, uh, 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 collectives uh, uh, targeting uh, uh, environmentally conscious investments like the One Planet Initiative. We are party to the One Planet Initiative that is sponsored by the, the French president. Uh, that is a collective of sovereign funds around the world that are actually seeing eye to eye on how to consciously uh, build their investment portfolios looking at sustainable green economic investments. And uh, uh, Egypt has, has made uh, a landmark with uh, uh, renewable energy. What we're looking and vying to create now is what are the other parallels we can draw in terms of sustainable investments in the, in, in the real economy. Egypt is a very rich real economy, and the real economy has agri. So ag agricultural technology is the next big thing. How can you become more conscious around the resources? How can you become more conscious around the water, uh, the use of uh, uh, fertilizers? All of these pollutant uh, activities, if you uh, advocate the right science and the right management behind those, then you can actually become a more sustainable uh, developer and investor in, in actually better profitable and higher return projects. So it's no longer becoming uh, a support or you're no longer need, you don't need to subsidize some of those projects. Of course, in some areas uh, where there are new technologies that are coming online, uh, like uh, the, um, uh, how the solar made its transition to become a mainstream technology, and the, 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 the cost of producing solar energy has become so competitive now that it's now actually uh, cheaper than conventional energy. Now the challenge is how do you store that uh, uh, resource? Now there are other technologies like the green hydrogen technology. It has not made it yet to a sustainable level of technology or a competitive level, so it, ne it needs to make the transition into the mainstream. And these technologies actually need to be nurtured, uh, but with uh, the, the, the conscious global uh, economic uh, uh, activity to become, to bring those technologies to mainstream and to make them more competitive, then the adoption is becoming more of a mainstream uh, um, uh, uh, attitude. Where, we, where we're, um, uh, we're looking at creating investable opportunities uh, to, to, lend, to lend ourselves back to the point of how do we structure uh, investable, green investable opportunities, uh, Egypt's uh, next wave is coming into uh, uh, desalination, and this is a big commitment from the Egyptian government. Uh, water shortage, water efficiency is a, is a, is a theme that is uh, at the heart of uh, the 2030 uh, 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 objectives. However, what we are saying is how can we bring green uh, energy into desalination, and this is actually a government commitment, and that's good news. How do we make those investable um, uh, products? We as a fund sponsor some of those initiatives to bring in, and, and, and uh, inclusive, the inclusive word is, is a very common um, uh, word. We actually practice this inclusive uh, um, uh, attitude by co-investing and opening up uh, partnership opportunities for the private sector to come in and to actually help us achieve those, uh, those goals. So it cannot be done uh, by government spending alone. It has to be done with uh, a good uh, public-private partnership, and this is at the heart of how we structure our investable opportunities and actually how the entire uh, cabinet or the entire uh, administration of Egypt is looking at now the, in the inclusive uh, uh, economy. And so inclusive, sustainable, green, the green component is what Egypt has to offer. If I look at the, the, the 2050 uh, carbon neutrality targets of the EU as a bloc, 
I promise you, the EU cannot achieve that carbon neutrality without actually reaching outside of the borders of the EU because you need partners to, to provide the level of green energy, the level of green uh, products that you need to be able to live up to that commitment. So all the European uh, multinational companies, all the Western multinational companies, and, and now uh, that we've recently seen the, the proxy fight uh, uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that um, the, the green activists won in ExxonMobil's uh, board, this is a shift in global companies where they are becoming and growing more environmentally conscious. That for that company to live up to its commitment on carbon neutrality and the new direction, they will have to adopt that globally. And every footprint that these companies have in Egypt, this is where they can enhance their score, this is where they can earn carbon credit, and this is where they can actually achieve carbon neutrality and uh, uh, balance off uh, their activities uh, in other parts of the world. So this is the, what Egypt has to offer to that, and, and we're trying to build on that in terms of uh, translating those into investable projects and partnerships that actually pinpoint those, uh, those targets. I hope I answered your question. Yes, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Seliman. Um, now I'll turn again to uh, Dr. Mr. Al Afia. Uh, if you, from your position, if you would uh, give the Egyptian uh, uh, private sector some advice uh, on how to uh, foster their investment in uh, green economy and how the EU can also uh, support the Egyptian uh, private sector uh, in this area, uh, we'd like to listen to your views on this, please. Thank you. Um, as I said, and um, as I said, and we are very proud actually to be one of the promoters and supporters of public-private partnership, but also supporting the green transition in, in, within the private sector and within companies. And, and I give some examples of, of projects and programs that we have currently here. Now, I mentioned uh, uh, during my intervention that the EU has a new financial instrument but also a new financial tool that is called the European Sustainable Development Fund. And uh, the European Sustainable Development Fund will scale up something that we used in the past, which is a possibility of blending <coughs> grants with concessional funding, but mostly also to provide guarantees to allow for de-risking investment by the private sector in the region. Your EU has also uh, provided possibilities of developing flagship in the region, and we have identified 12 flagship. Among those flagship projects or areas, priority areas, there is an area of, of course, uh, energy transition. And I heard uh, our colleague here mentioning the uh, green hydrogen. This is something, of course, it's of a big interest to the EU and of big interest in Egypt because we have received requests in order to be able to develop such technology in the Egyptian market. And of course, any initiative that would come from the private sector in this perspective can be looked at by the European Union and its partners. We are working together with European financial institutions. I mentioned some of them, like the EIB and EBRD, but also we are working with member states, like the French Agence Française de Développement or the KFW. So all those opportunities are there and will be further mobilized in order to allow a green investment by the private sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lafia. <clears throat> now I turn again to uh, Mr. Suleiman. Um, what do you expect from the international organizations and uh, multilateral cooperation that we're talking about here? How can they be benefit uh, the Egypt uh, Sovereign Fund? Well, actually, they, they, they are our partners in properly packaging those uh, investable products. So for instance, if we're targeting uh, uh, renewable energy projects and there are uh, a multitude of those uh, coming, uh, coming online, Egypt is expanding its uh, uh, capacity of produ producing renewable energy, be it uh, in the solar or in the wind uh, uh, technology. There are also other projects that are coming online. All of these projects cannot be achieved without actually having access to uh, competitive financing terms. We're not talking about concessionary finance, we're talking about competitive financing terms. For desalination technology to actually become a mainstream technology and to serve uh, the world, 
the financing component is a, is, an, is a key ingredient in the cost of actually producing uh, uh, fresh water from, uh, from the sea. So these are uh, components where competitive access to financing can actually bring uh, uh, efficiency and, and uh, to, to make, those, uh, make the transition to the mainstream competitive technologies. So th those are uh, our partners in, uh, in, in development all along. Um, thank you very much. I'm sorry we don't have much time to take any questions from the floor. Uh, but uh, in conclusion, I would like to thank you all. I would like to thank our two prominent speakers uh, and, of course, to thank all the audience. And um, just two words. Uh, uh, cooperation is very important. Partnership is very important. Private, uh, pri public-private partnership, uh, partnership uh, with all the uh, international organizations that are working uh, here in Egypt. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, promoting and uh, further enhancing the partnership uh, with all the multilateral uh, cooperations that are working here in Egypt to uh, reach our aspirations on uh, 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 reaching uh, green growth in Egypt. Thank you very much.